Chemistry lecture number 47, predicting the outcome of single replacement reactions. Before we start, you might want to go to this website and print out lecture number 47 because it has this little uh, chart we're going to use. And you might find it handy to have this chart next to you to refer to as I explain how to do some of these uh, questions. All right, well, here we go. In a, single <coughs> excuse me, in a single replacement reaction, one element will replace another element in a compound. So here's a reaction, uh, solid copper uh, put into a silver nitrate solution. So this solid stuff is dissolved in water. And then the outcome is that the uh, copper nitrate will be dissolved in solution and then solid silver will be produced. So in the above reaction, copper will replace silver in the compound AgNO3 to create uh, CuNO3. Um, in fact, if you take a copper wire and stick it into a clear solution of silver nitrate, uh, the copper will dissolve into the solution and give it a blue color, which is the color of uh, copper nitrate. Uh, the silver that is dissolved in the solution as silver nitrate will precipitate and solid silver crystals will appear. So I have a black and white picture I can show you of this. So if you look at this, this wire is made of copper and it's being dunked into a solution of silver nitrate. Now the silver nitrate is dissolved, but what happens is a chemical reaction occurs. <clears throat> the copper wire will start to dissolve and it will dissolve and become uh, copper nitrate. And these little uh, flakes right here are silver crystals that are precipitating out of solution. This test tube container started clear and then suddenly these little flakes started appearing. These flakes are the uh, silver. I can show you another color picture. So if you look at this, so this is the copper wire here, and then being formed on the copper wire is silver. It's precipitating out of solution. And you notice that the uh, solution has a slight tint of blue. That's the copper nitrate that's being formed in the uh, dissolved solution. Now, if I take a copper wire, <coughs> and let's say I put it into an aluminum nitrate solution, uh, will aluminum precipitate out of solution? Uh, the reaction would be a uh, copper wire placed into an aluminum nitrate solution, and we think we might get copper nitrate again, and then solid aluminum would precipitate out. Well, in fact, actually the above reaction does not occur. If you were to put a copper wire into uh, the aluminum nitrate solution, nothing would happen. Now we can predict if a single replacement reaction will occur. Uh, if an element in a single replacement reaction is more reactive than another element, the reaction will occur. Uh, an activity series is a list of elements ordered from most reactive to least reactive. So here we are, this is our activity series. <clears throat> so it's a list of elements. Um, we put the metals on this side and we put the uh, halogens, which are in group 7a on that side. <coughs> and the higher up on the list it is, the more active it is. And as we go down the list, the elements become less active. So let's use the activity series to predict whether a reaction will occur. And the rules are, if the element is on the left side of a single replacement reaction, or if the element on the left side of a single replacement reaction is listed above the element on the right side of the equation, uh, the reaction will occur. Uh, if the element on the left side of the reaction is listed below the element on the right side, the reaction will not occur. So I'll walk you through it and I'll show you what all these words mean. <clears throat> okay, so let's predict whether the uh, following reaction will occur. So this is the reaction I showed you the pictures of. We know it occurs because you know people have done the experiment, but uh, can we predict if this reaction will occur using the activity series chart. All right, so let's figure out if this reaction will occur or not. We're gonna pay attention to the elements. So we focus on the element on this side and the element on this side. So we ignore the compounds. All right, so copper is the element on the left-hand side of the equation. Silver is on the right-hand side. And if you look at the activity series, copper is listed above silver in the metals column. So copper is right here and it's listed above silver. So copper is above silver. <clears throat> and so, since copper on the left-hand side is listed above silver, or is more reactive, the above reaction occurs. So here's copper, here's silver. 
this one on the periodic or on the activity chart is above and this one is below all right so since the one on the left is above the one on the left or the one on the right hand side since copper is above silver then the reaction will occur <clears throat> now let's try it for another one predict whether the following reaction will occur uh, copper and sil uh, aluminum nitrate will that produce copper nitrate and solid aluminum <clears throat> so if I took a copper wire and dunked it into an aluminum nitrate solution will aluminum begin to precipitate out well let's take a look Copper, we're going to focus on this one, is on the left, and aluminum this time, not silver, but aluminum is on the right. Copper is listed below aluminum in the metals column on the activity chart. So here's copper, but then here's aluminum right here. In order for the reaction to occur, copper has to be above aluminum, but it's below aluminum. So therefore, the reaction will not occur. And so a lot of times what you do is that to indicate the reaction won't occur, you don't write this, you just write NR for no reaction, all right? So this reaction will not occur. If you throw copper into a aluminum nitrate solution, nothing happens. There's no reaction. Let's try another one. Predict whether the following reaction will occur. We've got bromine gas being bubbled through a sodium fluoride solution. And we want to know whether or not um, sodium bromide will be made and uh, fluorine gas will be made. All right, so the elements in this reaction are this one and this one. These two are compounds. We ignore them. <clears throat> so uh, bromine and fluorine. So where are they comparatively on the chart? Well, bromine and fluorine are a halogen, so we use uh, this side here. So here's bromine. Here's fluorine. Uh-oh. Bromine is below fluorine, all right? Bromine has to be above fluorine, but on here we can see that bromine is below the fluorine. So, bromine is below fluorine on the activity chart, so the reaction will not occur. So, we just cross that out and we write NR for no reaction. Here's another one. <clears throat> Predict whether the following reaction will occur. We've got chlorine gas being bubbled through a potassium iodide solution. And we think that potassium chloride will be made and that iodine gas will be uh, produced. All right, well, here's chlorine. Chlorine is above iodine on our uh, little list here. So since chlorine is above iodine uh, in the activity chart, the reaction will occur. So yes, reaction occurs. Alright, so that's how you use the activity chart to figure out whether chemical reactions occur in a single replacement reaction. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 47, predicting the outcome of single replacement reactions.